Good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us for a Red Hat whiteboarding session. My name is Chris Exmouth. I'm the strategic lead for uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning strategy in public sector. And my name is Ryan Krauss. I'm a cloud solutions architect also with public sector. Today we're going to uh, talk a little bit about machine learning and try to demystify uh, some of the common uh, misunderstandings around the types of machine learning, as well as provide uh, some uh, information on when and where you would want to use each one of them. Ryan, we have uh, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning here. Uh, can you talk a little bit about supervised learning? Sure, so supervised learning is the first of three types of machine learning, and that's where a computer is able to identify math to map known inputs to known outputs. Excellent, I see a little drawing of a kitty cat here. Can you talk about him? Sure, so um, supervised learning is used commonly in image recognition applications. So I can feed it a lot of known pictures of kitty cats, and I can go in and say, I've identified ears, I know what whiskers look like, I am 98% sure that is a cat. Excellent, and uh, I'm guessing that because we're only identifying cats, we wouldn't be able to use that exact same data set and say, identify a dog. No, we'd also have to include dogs in our input data set in order to do but that. But if we did show a dog, we'd be able to say that it's not a cat. Right, it will, if we don't include dogs in our training set, then we can say this is a cat and or it's not a cat. Excellent, excellent. Uh, let's move on to unsupervised learning. This seems like a lot of dots on here. What, uh, what can you tell us about this? Sure, so unsupervised learning is very similar to supervised learning, except I'm identifying complex math to identify previously unknown patterns in my input data set. So I can walk through my data set and say, I've identified pattern A and pattern B here, and then maybe if I get a new data point that's an outlier from those known patterns, I can say that that's unusual. This is really common in fraud detection because I can now flag these unusual data points and take a closer look at them for fraud. And it seems like you know this is a garbage in, garbage out scenario. We're handing it a lot of data and we're just anticipating that the machine will understand it and give us some useful output. Can you talk about the pros and cons of that? Yeah, so uh, we don't have to label our input data, which is great, it saves us a lot of time up front. But on the other hand, since we may not have that deep domain knowledge in our input data, we may not recognize that our output patterns are not as good as they should be. This is why this tends to take a lot more data science type work in order to implement. And mentioning data science, you know, one of the advantages and why this is really relevant to uh, Red Hat audiences uh, is that some of the tooling that we have are actually bringing these teams together. So when we think about a data science team, a dev uh, team, an operations team, uh, they are very hard to normally bring together. Can you talk a little bit about some of the tools that might actually assist with this? Yeah, so in the machine learning space in general, containers have been really instrumental in allowing us to recreate specific data science environments and then run them not only for our training, but also for our production algorithms. This is where Kubernetes platforms like Red Hat OpenShift have become very important. Fantastic. Moving on to the last one, reinforcement learning. This looks like a chessboard. Can you talk to that? Absolutely. So reinforcement learning, it's a type of learning where a computer is able to adjust its own algorithm based on a known good or a known bad outcome. Excellent. So it kind of represents game theory. You would have to run through it a whole bunch in order to you know, really understand what's good and what's bad. Right. So it's really common when training computers to play games like chess, checkers, or go. We can say, hey, move one, move two, and move three. Maybe that resulted in a win. That's great. Let's increment the priority of these moves in our algorithm. Maybe move five, four, five, and six resulted in a loss. Well, that's bad. So let's decrement the priority of these in our algorithm. Fantastic. So this actually seems a little reminiscent of uh, our good friend, the kitty cat up here, right? You know, I have a cat and every time I open the tuna can, he comes running into the room. Is that an example of reinforcement? Yeah, learning? so reinforcement learning is very similar to how animals actually tend to end up learning is we learn based off our known good outcome or known bad outcome. That's fantastic. Uh, anything to add around pros or cons on this? Yeah, so the pros is that we can really fine tune our algorithm towards achieving that known good outcome. The cons is that we have to be able to simulate that gaming or that win and loss environment in order to run through a lot of iterations of our training. Uh, and what is Red Hat doing in this space overall? So in the machine learning space, Red Hat currently has a product called Red Hat Insights, where we actually use machine learning techniques to identify problems on customer systems before they become outages in production. Fantastic, and that would probably be a good example of which one of these? Uh, a lot of supervised learning and a little bit of unsupervised learning mostly. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Ryan. Appreciate your expertise, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, this has been a Red Hat whiteboarding video. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, uh, please contact your uh, local sales representative or go to uh, redhat.com uh, services and uh, reach out to us. We'd love to help you out.